I'm Dr. Jennifer Fugate and uh, from the Department of Neurology. I'm a resident. Uh, and with Dr. Alejandro Robinstein, we've worked on a study called uh, Posterior Reversible Encephalopathy Syndrome Associated Clinical and Radiologic Findings uh, to be published in the May 2010 uh, issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Uh, so uh, PRESS, or Posterior Reversible Encephalopathy Syndrome, uh, is associated with both clinical changes, uh, seizures, headaches, encephalopathy, visual disturbances, uh, and also radiologic findings of reversible vasogenic edema. Uh, so the cause of PRESS is actually unknown, uh, and the spectrum of the disorder is still being defined. So we looked at um, a large series, 120 episodes of PRESS, over a 10-year period uh, at St. Mary's Hospital. And we found that there are certain clinical uh, associations that haven't been very well emphasized in previous reports. Uh, and the uh, main finding I'm referring to is that a high percentage of patients had autoimmune disorders, about 46% in our series. And actually, most of these patients were not on immunosuppressant medications. So other clinical uh, associations, such as high blood pressure, um, were seen. And in about 86% of patients, they had acute or severe hypertension. Um, uh, however, not all the cases uh, did so, and you don't need to have low or high blood pressure in order to have PRESS. Uh, also, we found that uh, about uh, two-thirds of our patients were in renal failure at the time of diagnosis. Uh, radiologically, we had the assistance of two uh, neuroradiologists to independently look at the brain MRIs, and these were done in 115 out of 120 episodes. Uh, and s some of our major findings were that, uh, although it's termed posterior, uh, brain involvement can be uh, diffuse. And in 77% of our population, they had involvement of the frontal lobes. 64% uh, had temporal lobe involvement. And a significant number of uh, patients had involvement of the brainstem or basal ganglia, about a quarter to uh, a half uh, in these uh, cases. And we also found that there are certain imaging characteristics that aren't always thought of as compatible with a diagnosis of PRESS, uh, and such as contrast enhancement, which we saw in about 21% of cases, uh, and things like acute hemorrhages uh, in 10% uh, or restricted diffusion in about 15%. And um, one important finding that was actually a negative finding was that the severity of the edema on the brain MRI was actually not um, correlated with a cl any clinical association, for example, uh, the degree of hypertension. Uh, so this relates to clinical practice um, in that hopefully it will aid uh, physicians and caregivers uh, in their ability to recognize press uh, with a greater understanding of the, of the clinical and the radiologic spectrum. Um, and uh, as far as how that relates to, to patients, uh, it really uh, hopefully will aid in the, the speed to diagnosis and therefore the, the speed to the, the treatment, which in most cases is to uh, withdraw any offending agent and to help uh, control the blood pressure. Uh, there are several directions that, that research uh, still needs uh, to go in order to better look at PRESS. And I think that with the high degree of autoimmunity that we found in our uh, series, this may lend some support to the endothelial injury as a mechanism for the underlying pathophysiology. Uh, so uh, future research can be done uh, both clinically and in the lab uh, focused on the autoimmunity role. Uh, in Mayo, within the past year, there's been a paper uh, or a study uh, that showed an association or a possible association between PRESS and, and NMO spectrum disorders and the presence of aquaporin-4. Uh, and this is an area of active ongoing research as well. Uh, the takeaway message is that uh, PRESS can have uh, a variable uh, presentation um, clinically and radiographically, and that uh, a high percentage of patients may have an autoimmune disorder, which might support uh, the endothelial dysfunction as the mechanism of pathogenesis. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org.
This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.